Remember that scene in How to Get Away with Murder where Viola Davis was just broken and she walks into her bedroom. Her mom, who's played by Cicely Tyson, is sitting on her bed and Viola starts to slowly take off her wig and remove all of her makeup. She walks over and sits at her mother's feet and her mother lovingly starts to scratch her scalp and console her. That was a huge moment for black women. Remember, we just saw vulnerability and intimacy and love between two women in a way that is very common within our community, but to see it on the big screen during prime time was just unbelievable. Whether you were a big fan of the show or not, you heard about it. It spread like wildfire. People were calling it the blackest moment on TV. And we felt connected to it. In what I think is a wholly unique and fascinating way, our hair, the hair of black women, deeply connects us. It connects us across generations, across language, across borders. Anywhere that we exist in the world, we are connected through our hair. And I've wanted to scratch at that, pun intended, to create a deliberate space where we can share our experiences, all the things that we've learned, and all the ways that we have felt as it relates to our hair, whether it's feeling vulnerable or humiliated or loved or seen or powerful. Recently, I did a big um, DIY project and redid my closet. And I found all these old photographs, the actual ones that you can hold in your hand. <laughs> and I realized that many of them um, contained my hair stories. One of them that was particularly humiliating is um, something that happened to me in my early 20s. I was fired from a job because I was wearing braids. I was taken to HR. The HR person told me that my braids were unprofessional. She learned about braids from the movie 10 with Bo Derek running on the beach. She actually said that to me. I learned about braids from my ancestors, from Jet Magazine, from Ebony Magazine, and from all the fly women I saw growing up in my Brooklyn neighborhood. So, yep, I got fired. Um, I sued them and I won the lawsuit, but I was really humiliated to have to go through that as a young woman. Another of my hair stories was a very, a very powerful one. It was my lock story. My routine for grooming my locks was usually reading my Bible in my big closet, in my big house, wearing my big diamond ring, and asking God for direction in how to deal with my big cheating husband. Within a year after that, I moved my victorious locked self with my three children from New Jersey to North Carolina and we thrived in this new place that God had prepared for us. I believe that an ever-growing connection of stories like these, your stories, has the potential and the power to create new connections, new knowledge, and new opportunities for us. Think about what we did in the natural hair care movement and all the ways that we've been innovating around our hair, whether the hair is grown or bought does not matter. We black women created an entire industry, an entire movement, an entire economy around natural hair care. We did that one YouTube video at a time. We needed to, no one was doing it for us. We needed to connect, we needed to learn from each other and we did it. Hair Stories will be an extensive compilation of interviews, written narratives, and audio recordings that capture the personal experiences of Black women centered around our hair. My name is Angela Fraser. I am the founder and CEO of Rhythm Wigs, and I invite you to share your stories at rhythmwigs.com 
and join me in creating this new space together.